everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on our very exciting day time joining us on Zoom. We look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully very soon. And welcome back if you've joined us before. I see a lot of familiar faces. And so thank you so much for choosing Florida Craft Art with so many choices in our community. Choosing us tonight is a, a very profound one. So thank you. And you are certainly going to enjoy tonight's event and all of this wonderful work in our exhibition. So welcome to Florida Craft Art and our series on of talks on fine craft. Uh, our mission is to, of course, grow the statewide creative economy by engaging the community and advancing Florida's fine craft artists and their work. Our statewide nonprofit organization is headquartered in sunny downtown St. Petersburg, which has a very large gallery with over 250 Florida's fine craft artists. We are open seven days a week and we are free and open to the public those seven days a week. And on our second floor, we house 19 artists studios. We present seven to eight curated shows a year in our exhibition gallery. In the environmentally engaged exhibition tonight, there are 69 works by art of art by 38 artists in total. It is a magnificent exhibition. We um, in order to bring these quality exhibitions to you and our community and educational programming free of charge, we depend on our sponsorships. We depend on our kind community giving forth as they have so generously in the past. And our main sponsor for the environmentally engaged exhibition is Catherine Howd and Edward Rux, along with David and Becky Ramsey, Regions Bank, the Florida Craft, the Florida Division of Arts and Culture, and the city of St. Petersburg. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors for your continued support. Julia Galloway is a potter who creates utilitarian work and is a professor and director of the School of Art at the University of Montana, Missoula. Missoula. Julia was raised in Boston and received her Master's of Fine Arts at the University of Colorado at Boulder and Bachelor of Fine Arts at the New York State College of Ceramics at Alfred. Her work has been published in many ceramic magazines and books. Her works are included in the collections of the Renwick, Smithsonian Museum, Washington, D.C., the Huntington Museum of Art, West Virginia, um, Archie Bray Foundation in Helena, Montana, the Clay Art Center in Port Chester, New York, the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada, and the University of Arkansas Fayetteville. That's to name a small, small representation. I have seen her CV and it looks like a law book. It's about 15, 16 pages long, and we are so honored to have her uh, in our presence. Our exhibit runs through October 23rd. Again, free and open to the public. Please come and join us and visit us at your earliest convenience. Bring a friend and join our organization. Thank you for attending. And I will now turn it over to Julia. Yes, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to um let's see allow julia julia can you get in now to the screen let's see let's see hi do you see uh, my desktop yes it says you started sharing yeah. there, there we, we go, go. With that rather flattering photo of me with a new haircut yep that's the one so hi everybody i'm just so delighted to be part of this show I've been working on an endangered species project for a couple of years, and I thought I'd just share with you about sort of how I developed the idea and where the project is. It's about a six or seven year project, which is um, slightly astounding to me. So I'm coming to you from uh, Missoula, Montana, and uh, I'm happy to be here. There's been three primary influences on this project of mine. I'm from a traditional pottery background, and when I turned 50, I wanted to make some work that had a sort of broader uh, concern or broader engagement with the world. And during that time, I had heard about this uh, bird called the wandering albatross, which is a, a bird that has an 11 foot wingspan that just seemed amazing to me. And they're really struggling because they're getting caught in fishing lines and they're getting decapitated at the rate of one every five minutes. And I have to say that that fact, I hate to be like a drama queen, but that fact just floored me at the rate of how um, our natural world is being affected by us. So I sort of got thinking about this and right around that time, artist Akio Takamori had passed away. 
Mm -hmm. I was a big fan of his work. And his last body of work that he made in this very last part of his life was about apology and remorse. And so here you can see the Chancellor of Germany apologizing after World War II. And he did a body of work based on um, making images of political figures apologizing. And it made me sort of think about, honestly, about apology. And what am I responsible for in the world? And I don't mean that like such a heavy trip. I just meant it like, what am I responsible for and what can I do? And, you know, I was a child in the 70s and somehow in the 70s, there was a big environmental movement that kind of slipped away. And I let that happen like all of us. The other main influence for me has been that being a child of the 70s and going in college in the 80s is that um, I'm part of the AIDS generation. And when I, <clears throat> when ACT UP got involved with AIDS and it made this quilt, the AIDS quilt, the Names Project, it made something that was relatively invisible, visible. And when I remembered seeing the AIDS quilt, it was so profound to me that something that I had barely seen suddenly was so present in front of me. I thought, this is a good idea. So I started working and thinking about endangered species. And the problem with endangered species is that you don't see them, right? Like you barely realize they're gone. So I thought I would first do a little show just to get me warmed up with the idea. And so I started to research endangered species from 1820 to 2020. And my first show I had in um, Boston at Harvard. So these are just some process shots. These are urns that I made and I drew all of the endangered species from New England on the surface of the urns. And I was thinking there might be crafts people here tonight and you'd like to see my kiln. I know it's so nerdy, I can't help it. But I just thought you guys might like to see some process shots. So here I am coming out of and we're packing up and shipping off this big show. Um, we're shipping it, look how proud I am, how cute. Um, but here is the show in Boston and it is about um, about 900 urns. So these are the endangered species that are very specific to New England. Um, New England has a real identity to itself and I grew up in Boston. So I, I thought that would be a good place for me to sort of start this um, adventure, this artistic adventure. So this is here in New England. So that when that was done, I thought, well, something's working here because it did really affect people. They stayed in the gallery for a long time and they sort of hung out and um, looked very closely at the work. They asked me a lot of questions about the work. And I tried to make the urns have the species all over the surface, but then just have one of the species that was colored. And this was so that species really felt alienated or isolated as it would be. So I was trying to figure out how to really represent that on the urns. And these urns are about human scale. They hold about a gallon of ash which is for maybe a, a normally fit six foot man would fit in one of these urns. So here we go. So one thing that was kind of interesting to me when I started to work on these urns is that honestly, some species were a little bit yucky to me, like the, like this, like the catfish with all the stuff hanging out of their mouth. And then this is a um, leech on the right. And I had to really figure out some way to love all of the species, even if I didn't love them. And that that was really a trial for me to look at species I thought like spiders kind of freaked me out, right? So I had to really like let go and work on it. After I did the New England show, I um, <clears throat> started to learn how to carve. And it seemed like this sort of way of lifting up the urns even more, having this detail of carving. So these are sort of the very early carved urns that I've been working on. And this is what's actually in the show in Florida work that looks like this. So I wanted to spend more time on each urn and I wanted to make each one sort of um, more detailed. I felt like if we have driven you out of extinction, the least thing I can do is spend two days carving you. Do you see that sounds so altruistic and it sort of is, but I felt very strongly that I wanted to be dedicated to these species. So these are sort of examples of these most recent urns that I've been doing. And the pieces that you have in Florida are similar to this. So, <clears throat> so the other part, a little bit about making this work is sort of the relationship between, we can look at this while I explain, but the relationship between 
um, making work that's about the environment, but also working in a way that's environmental. Look, working with clay, I'm strip mining. Comes right out of the ground. Firing clay, that's using electricity. There's no question about this. Right? So I've been working very hard and trying to figure out what kind of studio practices can support my, these values. So one thing I've come across is that this is my clay body. So any um, potters, this might, will look familiar to you. So this is my clay body. And I became very interested in here in flint. It's one of the main ingredients in my clay and glaze. And so I went to this county and I found where the flint mine is, right? So this is in Illinois. And then here's the flint mine right here, right? And I thought, so this is where my clay is coming from. And I started to look all around here and got on the phone and called a lot of people in Illinois. And here is the Flint mine and here is a land trust. So right across from the Flint mine, there's a big land trust where they're keeping the land from getting developed. And they keep expanding that land trust every year. So 10% of my pottery sales, I send to the land trust. Now I know that that's like robbing from Peter to pay Paul or whatever that is, but it's what I can do. And uh, I seem to be able to do it. Now, I don't wanna end on a super negative note because I do want you to know that of the um, endangered species project I'm working on, some species do come off the endangered species list. It is not always a one-way journey. So bats have had such a hard time. And here is one of the bats I did a commemorative plate for. And here is a bat urn. And um, this bat actually has come off the endangered species list. It's from Arizona and it was able to recover when they um, stopped harvesting the guava cactuses quite so aggressively. So that was pretty exciting to me that it's not a one-way journey. So <clears throat> this is my studio right now. Sorry, the photos are kind of hack and slash, but I'm working on doing all the endangered species of the continental United States. And I'm working from the federal list and of endangered, threatened, extinct and recovered species. And it's about 1,436 urns. And I am about 10% the way through. So, but this has come to be a, um, a, I'm about two years into what I think will be a six year project. Um, but I thought you'd like to see just the progression of, um, of what I'm working on. And I do miss being a daily potter, making mugs for people, but somehow this, this project, well, it's quite near and dear to me. And I really have enjoyed working on it. So I'm just thrilled you were interested in hearing me talk about it. The um, urns that are in the show are all species that are within a few miles of the gallery. And some of them are nationally endangered and some of them are um, uh, regionally endangered. But I wanted to have the sense that you walked in the gallery and looked at those urns that probably to get to the gallery, you passed where those species live today. These are sort of the primaries that I'm focused on, birds, plants, fish, mammals, reptiles, mussels, and moths. And um, I think I'm speaking to the converted right now, so there's no need to tell you guys what to do. You know what to do. But I think really what we all need to do is just do less. Like we need to consume less and be less and walk a little lighter and do more, but use less doing it, I think really is what we need to do. But uh, I don't wanna get all preachy preachy. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And um, I was thrilled to be able to show you my work. Could I ask you a question? Sure. Um, Julia, this is Dana Maley. I'm on the board of Florida Craft Art. Um, I'm a little confused uh, because you showed a picture that appeared to be all flora and no fauna. So, I don't know if you had just not yet carved the animal onto that, it was all flowers, or if you're actually including extinct, uh, you know, uh, plants that are going extinct. Um, Thank you. So yes, it's a great question. And I get it quite often, honestly. Um, my sister is a botanist and originally I was mm -hmm. just doing, uh, species that moved around and she just let me know that without the plants we'd be in really big trouble and I better get to it in the, my studio and get those plants done so I have to say the plants also are included in the project oh wonderful thank you yeah, sure
And we're, Julia's going to hang around with us for the presentation, right, Julia, so that we can at the end have uh, answer any more questions um, for any anyone. So now <clears throat> I'm going to give you a quick tour. And I photographed the uh, show today and I've put it on a PowerPoint. So I'm not going to talk about each individual artist except for just a couple. And then you can just see what the show looks like. And then we'll go on to the awards and have the uh, question and um, answer period. Um, and I do hope that everyone will come in to see it. Uh, we've already had quite a few sales and it's extraordinary, extraordinary work here. So now I'm going to share my screen, I think. Hold on a minute. Uh, let's see, so now. I'm here. Okay, just a second. Can everyone see the screen? Okay, good. All right. So this is the entrance of the gallery. And I this is the first time I think Julia's had the opportunity to see the, the screen. I mean the the not the screen, the um the gallery. These are Julia's pieces in the show. I had to show you this close up of Elisa DM's octopus because it's just awesome. And I want to say also that Liz Cooper and Julia did an amazing job putting this together and managing all of that. We have uh, 38 artists and 69 pieces in the show. So it is a it is a pretty large show, and she she and and uh, Liz and Julia did a wonderful job uh, creating it, and also working with all the artists. This is a jacket by Elizabeth Neely, Kimberly Cummings. These are three pieces that she created for the show, and Kimberly is one of our board members and a gallery artist for many years. See, there we go. We designed this logo for the for the show. And we have artists from all over the state of Florida um, participating in this exhibit. This interest, this is a very interesting. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Can you hear me? All right. Okay, good. Uh, this is a very interesting piece um, by Roseanne D'Andrea, and it is a chess set that she created. She has one side are the animals and the other side are the pollutants. And at the bottom of each piece is a QR code. And since we didn't, which links to information, for instance, about the albatross or about uh, the pollutants. And so we also made up a, a sheet here so that people could scan it because we, we don't want people picking up the, the artwork, obviously. But it's very, very interesting and she put a lot of effort and thought into it. I'm gonna go back on these pieces uh, that you see right here are by uh, Catherine Howe and they are miniature corals and there's also a lot of plastic uh, mixed in with it. Now I'd like to introduce Howard Rutherford who is our environmentally engaged exhibition judge and uh, we asked Howard for several reasons. One, he's always been very active in the community. He's also very, he's the Senior Director of Development Gift Planning for the University of South Florida. And for 13 years, he was the President and CEO of the Pier Aquarium. As the founding co-chair, he helped to establish the St. Petersburg Science Special uh, Festival. He is also an oceanographer. He serves as advisor to the Science Festival Alliance at MIT, 
an international organization fostering a professional community dedicated to more and better science and technology festivals. He's also served on the St. Petersburg Arts Alliance, the umbrella organization serving the arts and cultural community, and is part of two public art selection committees. He's an avid su supporter of our organization and a craft art festival collector circle patron. And we really appreciate his expertise on the science end, his help uh, in helping us get presenters for our educational program and his expertise in, in, in art. And so I'd like to introduce Howard. Um, Howard, would you start with honorable mentions, please? Hi. Katie, if I could just add a couple more things. That, that was a wonderful introduction. Thank you. And I'm honored and humbled, humbled to be asked okay, to well, judge uh, Hold on. Can everybody uh, see Howard there? Okay, good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Again, I just want to just want to say thank you. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to to judge Florida Craft Art environmentally engaged exhibition. The last environmental exhibition that I was involved with with Florida Craft Art many years ago was the Crochet Coral Reef Project. And for those of you who've been around for a while, that was such an amazing exhibit that involved people from across the country and across the world make pieces for that, that uh, installation. And uh, we were, we were um, more to host several activities at the aquarium where we people crocheting different sea creatures to be uh, introduced into that exhibit. So again, I, I, I've been, you know, I'm thrilled to be involved with Florida Craft. I'm, I'm humbled to be, um, I could give all 38 artists, um, well, I am recognizing all 38 artists because just to be entered into this exhibit, you know, the, the, the quality of art um, throughout our state and, and beyond, apparently, in Montana as well. Um, so each and every one of you, um, I think, should be um, honored to be included to participate. And again, a heartfelt thank you to all the participants and artists on behalf of Florida Craft Art the Board. Um, it's evident from the pieces that were submitted that a lot of thought and effort went into each and every piece of art. Um, to evoke how we, the collective we, uh, can be more aware of the changes needed uh, to create a more sustainable environment. Um, so, uh, yes, let's get to it. <laughs> okay, the, I will share my screen again. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, we'll our first that. honorable mention goes to. Okay, wait, wait. Drum wait, roll. Wait. Let me get up here to the. Right. Liz, drum roll. I can't do the no. I can't do no drum roll. How about how about a cute dog? Can you guys see the a cute dog while we get going? Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Honorable we'll mention. There we go. Uh, Kenny Jensen sledding. I think it's sledding on the shoulders of giants or in the shoulders of giants. I'm not sure, but uh, these were. This is an you know an interesting. Um, um, piece of art where my, my immediate thought, because I'm an oceanographer, went to, you know, I can envision these pieces of uh, plastics attached to, you know, whales in the middle of the Pacific Ocean because i have been there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and uh, it broke my heart to see um, pieces of plastic, you know, floating by our ship as we were taking samples um, at the equator. And, um, you know, I think Kenny, uh, you know, has spent a lot of time outdoors. Uh, he makes it his mission to make aware of uh, the effects of single-use plastics. And uh, I think this is a great way to evoke that emotion um, uh, about, you know, how we use single-use plastics in our everyday lives. And in our world in Tampa Bay and beyond, microplastics are a huge issue. You've hopefully eliminated them from our cosmetic um, 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 merchandise, but still we're seeing those pieces of plastic in the guts 
of sea turtles, um, in the digestive tracts of fish, fish actually that we eat. So we could be our own worst enemy here by using single-use plastic. But this is a great um, awareness piece from Kenny. So congratulations, Kenny. All right. Um, Kim Kirchman, Endangered Species. So someone mentioned um, uh, where were the flowers? Where are the flowers? So this is an endangered species in Florida, the Florida Golden Master, and this is a ceramic piece. Uh, you know, it's the juxtaposition of the stems and the flowers, the underlay, the red clay underlay, it's just amazing. And um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I, I, I bought this piece. Um, so thank you, Kim, um, submitting. Uh, so it really, really is an amazing piece. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have Laura Landring, Clean Water, a mosaic piece. Many of you are aware of uh, Laura's ceramic pieces that he has created. Uh, in fact, I just um, unwrapped one because I was moving my office uh, in USF, University of South Florida, and uh, I have one of her pieces in my office there. And uh, so I was, I was excited to see this mosaic piece, uh, very clean. Um, I love the, the, the surfboard. Um, it, it is, it, it's, it, it draws you in. Um, it's amazing. Did it sell yet? Not yet. Nope. I'm sorry. I unmuted okay. myself. Not yet, but I do have two collectors looking at it currently. So Beautiful. they would be crazy. They would be crazy not to buy it. <laughs> and it's okay. on a surfboard. It's on a surfboard. Congratulations. Okay. Our next honorable mention goes to Casey McDonald. This is a striking piece. I think the materials, the materials that um, were chosen for this uh, from the uh, exotic species, uh, trees species, uh, Brazilian pepper that were used to make the stand, uh, the monofilament line that he collected from from the beach, the monofilament line that he collected from the beach to tie those stick together, and the fish bones that he. It's an amazing piece. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Champa Bay, obviously they're trying to rebrand us because the Bucks and the Bolts uh, both won their respective championships. Uh, but this brings awareness, I think, to how we all could be champions of our environment and um, being more aware of what's around us. And Casey and I have similar, several things in common. We grew up, grew up outdoors, we went to Ecker College, uh, and we're always looking for ways to um, uh, improve our environment. And those uh, fish bones he collected after the red tide. Right. All right, our next honorable mention goes to Eileen Marquez for uh, her environmental activist Greta Thunberg um, portrait, and this portrait will draw you in. Um, you know the intensity of the face, the fabric that was used uh, to create uh, the, the flowers around. It is an amazing piece, and I think this reminded me. Uh, I mentioned this to Julia earlier: is that um, that one person can make a difference in this world, and um, I think. You know, she and uh, one young person can make a difference in this world, and we can learn a lot from um, her, her environmental issues, her effort, excuse me. All right, and our last honorable mention goes to Ryan Moralovitz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, for angling for a cleaner ocean. Uh, this angler fish has a, a light actually that, that is lit uh, on the barb there. And uh, this young man, I believe he's 14 years old, if I'm not mistaken, uh, has collected these pieces of plastic along the beach and created several art pieces. So um, it, it's wonderful that we've engaged at such a young age. And I can't wait to see uh, what the future holds for his um, artistic career. Yes, and I wanted to add that Ryan 
has, uh, normally we don't have uh, artists this young in the exhibit. He's uh, usually it's 18 years old, but he approached me about how he would like to uh, be in the exhibit and how he has been an environmental activist since he was four years old. And he raises money for Tampa Bay Watch and uh, he has a website called The Fish's Wishes. And he will be speaking um, on October 2nd along with Kenny Jensen and Casey Madonna, um, McDonough about their practices as uh, environmentally engaged artists. Now Kate, we're gonna go on to the- Katie, he reminds me, there's another young gentleman that I've been uh, uh, introduced to by the name of Sean Russell uh, from Sarasota. When I was at the aquarium, he created this um, pretty simple device uh, from a, a tennis ball container that you could um, that he he retrofitted to take out on kayaks. So when you're out there and you see monofilament line, it was an easy and convenient way to put the monofilament line. That has gone worldwide. He has created these youth stewards all across the world, and it's amazing again what these young people are doing. Yes, it's, it's very encouraging. Absolutely. Right. Um, our third place goes to Shelly Sacriel for No More Monsters. And this is an amazing ceramic piece, but um, the, the, um, the poetry, I shouldn't say poetry, but the, the language that was shared uh, along with this piece really moved me. Um, where again, we are, we have become, or we may become our, our own worst enemies here um, by destroying everything that we love when, until none of us are here. Um, but those that have, that we've tried to destroy may in fact um, survive beyond us. And so this is just a, a it, it spoke to me. And our second place is our, our, our uh, keynote tonight, Julia Galloway, her sea turtle uh, urn. Uh, it's an amazing, I, I, again, I, I, on the other side of the urn, you'll see a, a, another series of sea turtles um, that are etched into the clay, into the, into the urn. Um, it's a beautiful piece. And so uh, the whole series is beautiful. It's hard to, to, to choose one, um, but um, I chose the sea turtle because most recently, um, we've had two neighbors across the street who have uh, found three, I'll repeat, three sea dead sea turtles in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard to tell, you know, what was the cause of death um, for all three of them, but because one was so, um, uh, you know, deteriorated, uh, but two of them were actually from um, prop scars, uh, which are when, you know, the boats basically run over them. Uh, so uh, it, it had a special meaning in my heart, you know, to think about that. Congratulations, Julia. And our first place winner goes to Lorraine Turner uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and this picture doesn't do it. Actually, all the pictures don't do justice. You need to go sufficient for all these pieces. Um, but this particular image, uh, and Mark wants to come here, Mark. <laughs> This, uh, the, the two adult penguins who, who obviously mate for life, we've always we've seen the, the film, but the, the material that was used um, and the layering of material uh, is amazing. And the, the more you look at this piece, the more animals that, are, that, you'll, that will be brought out, uh, the, the fur on the, on, the, on the baby penguin, and of course, this holds a special place in my heart because I visit, I've visited the Antarctic twice now. Mm -hmm. And I have walked alongside these wonderful creatures. And it, 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 it just, it's a beautiful piece. So please, congratulations, Lorraine. And our best in show goes to Ann Anderson, the Technicolored Lion Head. Also, I keep saying amazing, but these are fabulous pieces. Uh, the, even this picture, as you look into those lion's eyes, 
I think everybody wants to to sing the lion sleeps tonight because this is just a a, a a a wonderful piece. It's it, it, it it's as real as anything can be with art. Um, but the time and effort that went into this is evident. Uh, and uh, again, I just I can't say enough positive things about this. So. And so the uh, the final one, thank you, Howard, and thank you so much for all your really thoughtful judging of the show and, and the insights and for doing the excellent commentary. Thank you. Um, hold on, I can think. So I always give an executive director's award and my award is to Roseanne D'Andrea um, who created the sea life chess set that I discussed, that I told you about before, and I hope you all will come in to see it. It's a really very interesting piece that she put a lot of thought into. And I wanted to mention too, sorry for the small type, this is all on our website, that we have a very interesting talk. I hope you all will attend. It's a panel. And it's going to be Tampa Bay Watch. Let me just see if I can minimize this. Hold on a second. There we go. Um, it's going to be talking uh, about bay grass restoration and oyster reef installations. Also, the Coral Reef Foundation will be discussing restoring coral reefs. They're located in Key Largo. And Dr. Fraser, a USF Marine Science, will speak. Uh, we, the panel will be moderated by Kristen Kusek of USF, and we do have Zoom links on our website. Then on Saturday, October 2nd, will be the talk that I mentioned, uh, where the three artists will be talking about their practices. And then finally, on October 21st, we will have a panel discussing how you can make a difference and you can learn about volunteer opportunities. So the show runs to September to October 23rd. This is a beautiful chair in the foreground by Nick Reale and a sculpture by Marilyn Rackelman in the background. We're open seven days a week. Our admission is free and we hope that you will come visit us. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, open it up for questions. So congratulations to all the, the winners and, um, and to everyone who participated in. We appreciated how so many artists did some extraordinary work. So um, why don't we open it up now for any questions or comments? You can just unmute yourself or raise your hand. Maybe that would be good. But um, do we have any questions or comments from anyone? If there's no questions, I, am, I don't know if this is odd to share, but to end with good news, the um, exhibit curtains came down yesterday afternoon at five o'clock. So we're just over 24 hours and we have sold 12 pieces from this exhibition already. And I can tell you in my tenure year, in eight years, that is definitely a new record. And it is so, it just speaks to how hard you artists worked on this. It is really spectacular. So congratulations to all those. And let's just keep doubling those numbers. And so with Kimberly Cummings, uh, I just, I want to thank Julia because you're a rock star and I <laughs> have to tell a short story. Katie and I were standing in front of, are you still here? And, there you are. Yes. Katie and I were standing in yes. front of your work and I said, um, <laughs> I said, that's weird because, you know, there's another Julia Galloway and Katie's like, no, it's, no, it's Julia Galloway. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 suddenly I mean I was just like how did that happen and she said I I called her and she said yes so I I know I'm speaking for hundreds of people that are going to 
uh, learn more of your story that's ongoing. And it's my, my life passion, what you're doing. And um, Bill and I now own your wood stork. So, and I sent you a picture of watching wood storks get married. Everyone here just about saw it last night. So I'm not making that up. I mean it. And I want to especially thank Liz and Julia for a mind-blowing exhibition set up. Um, it allows the viewer and the visitor to walk in and feel extremely welcome. And then your, your heart starts pulling you toward each piece separately. And it's highly unusual for me to make it around to see everything at an opening because one, I love to talk and two, I have ADD, but I did. And so that's all because of, of Julia and Liz's um, well thought out scheme. Um, and for Katie, never saying no to an important idea. Um, to me, I've been 20 years showing at Florida Craft Art Gallery, and this is the most important exhibit I've ever been part of. Um, thank you, Tyler Jones, for being an amazing board president, and for Dave and for Catherine for sponsoring the most important thing that we can do to save our planet and water and sky and birds and bugs. So um, I'm just a proud artist and Kim Kirchman is my favorite teacher because she was my first teacher and for her to win tonight just of course made me emotional so thank you Howard for being such a great judge and for all the winners we're all winners because we're in this together so thank, thank you. you thank you Kimberly thanks so much so how about one uh, another award winner do we have uh, someone else comment on whether they want an honorable mention or I know that uh, I see Shelly Reale there. Shelly, you want to say something about your, your work? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, yeah. hi all. Um, I love, I have waited so long for this show and prepared for it and um, have just been so excited about this show. I can barely contain myself because everything, all of my pieces all kind of have some sort of meaning behind them. And this is one that's really near and dear to my heart. And it was such a great experience just creating the pieces. So um, I want to thank everybody and especially Florida Craft Art for putting on this really important um, show. And thank you, Mr. Rutherford for choosing my piece. I, I, it means so much to me that somebody sees where I was going and here's my voice and here's my heart. So thank you very much for seeing that. And uh, that's all. I wanted to mention too that right behind my head, where is it? Right there is another installation that Shelley created called Vote. And you can come in and see the the ballots about how you can make a difference. Very interesting, you'll have to come in and see it. And I see, I think I see Lorraine Turner there. Lorraine, would you like to Yes, comment? thank you very much. Thank you, Florida Craft. Thank you for a wonderful uh, exhibition. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, effort on these artists and I, um, I'm honored to be among the artists that are exhibiting. The um, emperor penguins, I am a professional animal communicator. And so when I go into meditation, I communicate and I work specifically with endangered animals. All of my work, my teaching, my exhibitions, my uh, sales of my work, my everything I do, my speaking engagements all go to endangered animals. So this particular uh, event called to my heart. And so I'm thrilled that I was a part of it. Thank you, Howard, for your uh, wonderful expertise and for explaining the process behind it. Um, uh, I don't really hear that often and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to understand the process behind this. Uh, I also had the Black Panther in this piece, Welcome Rain. Welcome Rain features a Black Panther that spoke to me in meditation about being poached. So animals are endangered from a lot of different reasons. This animal was poached and is uh, showed me himself pacing back and forth in captivity and I made a promise to the animal that I would show it and uh, illustrate it in its natural environment so I should so you see it in the Amazon rainforest and it's called welcome rain 
So thank so, you very much. And uh, it, was, it was just an honor to be here. Uh, real quick, I want to jump back in. Sorry, me again. Um, Lorraine, that piece, Welcome Rain, has actually been red dotted and sold to one of our uh, oh. collectors who's with <laughs> us tonight, wonderful. but I won't put on the spot. But yes, that piece has sold already. That's so a wonderful thing. Thank you. And, and I, uh, that'll be donated. My part, part of it will be donated to uh, endangered animals. So uh, thank you so much, Liz, for telling me. It's a big, I'm going to get my glass of wine now. This is really great. <laughs> Cheers. So cheers. And, and I, got, I appreciate your presentation I got and, and, and really admire your work. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you now, very much. Let's see. Janie would like to say something. Janie's our business manager and the craft art festival manager. I just want to say that you all really need to come in and see these pieces. It is absolutely breathtaking. The detail is incredible. Um, it's just, it's mind blowing. And um, when this was all coming about, I'm like, okay, this sounds good, you know, but you got to see it. it. You know, the pictures, the lion, you have no idea what that looks like in real life. The picture does not even begin to portray the detail and the skill that was involved in that. Every little fiber. What is it, Liz? Um, uh, I forget what she told me. It I'm, I'm, it's agave fiber, actually. Little pieces. It's amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, I see Julia Galloway has her hand up. Julia, you want to unmute yourself, Julia Galloway? Sure. I just I had two quick things. One was I wanted to thank you guys for being willing to take all of the urns. You know, two more are coming. I just, uh, when you called and you sort of were interested in one, maybe two pieces, and I thought, like, what am I going to leave out? Mammal, bird, fish, you know, amphibian, plant. They're all, you know, so I kind of made a deal with you that you had to take them all. And thanks for doing that. And um, also, I was wondering, Howard, if there was sort of a, um, um, when you were juring, if you found yourself um, like kind of, like it's painful, right? It's painful to look at this stuff. And was it like a depressing process or an exciting process to jury? Or was it exhilarating? Or did it just make you want to, you know, crawl under your bed? I'm just wondering how you could handle so much sort of challenging information. In, in one time. Thank you. Well, it, it's challenging, but it's uplifting because the me messages were portrayed or, or depicted in the art was inspiring to me. And so, um, you know, it was very hard to choose, um, but, um, I, and, and, and again, everyone here, I mean, you have such great talent. Um, Every here, but but again, I, I but there's hope. You know, there's hope in the sense that we have Ryan here uh, as a, as a young artist who's trying to get those messages across. And you know, we have um, we had another installation in town, which a, a number of people on here were involved with, called um, Current Collections. It, again, when we went, we 1,600 families in Pinellas County, which is the county we live in, collected these plastic pieces along the beach and reimagined them into these plastic panels that we wrapped um, around this, I don't know how tall it was, 200 feet by wide. It was like an ocean gyre, if you can think of that. They wrapped it with all this plastic. And when you sat underneath it, it was terrible to think that you could collect all this, this plastic. But when you sat underneath it and looked at the sunlight through those plastic panels, it was so beautiful. And it became a, a sense of place for folks. There were people being married underneath this tip place. Catherine on, on, on the call here and I and others had picnics under this place. And it, it, was a, it was a way for us to have a conversation about the issue. And I think that's what a lot of this artwork does for us, have a, a place to have a conversation and, uh, and, and, and a, a sense of, of hope too. Thank you, Howard. I also see Ryan Moralovitz's hand up. Ryan, do you want to unmute yourself and make a comment? There we go. Yes, so hello everybody. It's so nice to meet all of you. Um, I just really wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everyone here, especially the art gallery because um, they accepted me in and that just really 
it really made me happy. And to see myself in the gallery along all these um, accomplished artists is really just a, a dream come true. I've been making these sculptures the past few years and I've become really passionate about them. I do it to raise awareness to the ocean. And it's just crazy seeing them in an art gallery. It makes it very cool for me. So thank you. Thank you for participating. We'll look forward to your, to your talk on October 2nd. Thank you. Uh, I see Kim Kirschman there. Kim, would you like to say something about your piece? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for including me in the show. I'm really excited about it. And also thank you, Howard, for purchasing my piece. Uh, that means a lot to me. Um, the Florida Gold Golden Aster is actually a plant that's indigenous to this area. So it has a comeback. Um, Bach Towers has been um, translocating um, some of the plants. In fact, they've got some um, sort of uh, a species uh, translocation at the Whedon Island um, Park. So for all of you guys, um, while plants are not as ex sometimes as exciting as mammals, birds, and fish, um, and especially asters, which are uh, a fairly plain and sort of looked over weed, they're incredibly important to this environment. Um, I'm a native to Florida and I've been here, I think I'm the fourth generation of my family. So a while, not as long as some people, but I've noticed a lot of change in the state and it concerns me greatly. So I really applaud the effort for this show. And I'm, I think that it's really important for people to understand um, our impact on the world and how we can sort of mitigate some of the terrible things that are happening. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. And um, I know Kim is a professor of art and I just wanted to add something about, about Ryan too, that we connected him with a sculptor here named Don Gilanella, who has participated in uh, many of our exhibits in the past and whose work in metal is really quite similar to what Ryan is doing out of plastics that he finds. And so Ryan was able to tour his uh, Don's facility and, you know, that's part of Florida mission is to mentor and foster artists, fine craft artists. So we're glad that he was able to, to visit Don's studio and appreciate Don for doing that. Let's see, uh, we have a couple more artists here who have won awards. Roseanne D'Andrea, would you like to say anything about your fantastic chess set? Sure, sure. Well, I created it um, pretty much thinking about the balance that we have to make between the things we need and want and the environment. And so, you know, I just tried to think about the way the chess pieces move and tried to relate the pieces that I, the animals or like I chose um, a hotel for the rook on the one side and I chose a coral reef for, a ho for the rook on the other side. So I tried to think about that kind of um, idea when I was making each piece. And, you know, it's a, it's a constant game. <laughs> it feels sometimes like a game. So that's kind of where I was coming from. And I'm just thrilled to be part of the show. I can't wait to get in to see it. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, we'll look forward to having you here. And, and I thought that the QR code was a great idea and uh, we see people, you know, scanning it and looking at it. So it's a, it's another way for us to really educate the viewers and to inspire them. And that's really what we want to do. We really want to motivate people yeah. to, to do their, their utmost. And um, I wanted to mention too, that in researching and getting ready for this show, I watched a lot of videos, read books, and also watched uh, Greta Thurn, uh, Thunberg's talk at the United Nations, where she said to them, we will never forgive you. And after watching all of that, I started making changes in my life. I went vegan. I am, we now do our own recycling here, even though we don't have a pickup. The staff, including myself, drives our recycling to the recycling centers. 
And I'm just, you know, all of us now are trying to do everything we can to help because I, I want my grandchildren to forgive me for the, the mess that we've made. So uh, we hope that we'll really inspire everyone who sees the exhibit. So we hope that all of you will share and talk about it. We'll be doing some Facebook posts of the pictures. So please blast it out to everybody that you know and, and, and please attend the upcoming talks that we have. Now, we still have um, Julia Galloway, I think is still on the phone or on the Zoom. Uh, yes, there she is. So does anybody have any more questions or comments for Julia? Uh, Kimberly, again, Kimberly Cummings. I'm so sorry, I have no right to do this, but Julia, if you could just think about and consider posting anything you want about this show so that each of us could share it on Instagram or Facebook, whichever you prefer, it would help everything that we're doing here, not just the artists, but the little creatures. <laughs> so I, I would appreciate that so very much. And I'm sending her, uh, we're photographing her urns and sending them to her. So you'll be able to do that. If you send me the other images of the other award-winning pieces, I'll put them all up. Uh, awesome, great, thank you so much. You bet. Does anybody else have uh, any comment? I see Catherine Howe. Catherine, did you? She's one of our sponsors, as is David Ramsey. Would you like to say, Catherine's been very involved in creating I the will. programming. I just want to thank everybody that put so much effort into the work in this show. It is a fantastic show. We envisioned this show, uh, I guess, about three years ago. And I so appreciate the effort that's gone into all of the work. It is a beautiful, beautiful show. And, but at the same time, it has so many messages in it. And they are very important. So I just want to thank you all. And David Ramsey, one of our other sponsors, did you want to thank you both for sponsoring? We can't do these exhibits and have everything free programming and everything without support from the community. David, would you like to say anything? Certainly. Well, the work was phenomenal. I don't know that uh, we've had better work uh, in the gallery uh, and especially when it's motivated by such a good cause. Uh, all spectrums of craft art were uh, represented and uh, well executed. So congratulations to all the artists. Thank you. And uh, Wanted to know, did anyone else have anything else that they wanted to say? Well, thank you all so much. Thanks, Howard and Liz, and uh, for the great job you did installing the exhibit. It's a real challenge to do that with so many artists. And so we hope, too, that you all will, again, share our message, encourage people to become members so that we have a lot of support to to promote our mission, we have calls coming up, our holiday shows next, and our member show is in January, and we'll be posting everything on our website. So um, I just want to ask our board president, Tyler Jones, if he'd like to say anything. I would like to thank everyone again for their participation, especially the artists and Howard as, as our esteemed judge. Um, what, a, what an incredible selection process and it's great to see all of the familiar faces again and i think that so many of the comments are representative of the the crux of this exhibition that we as a community of artists are the voice and the conduit for our lifeblood and community and so it's our role and responsibility to get that message out and then it's the community's role and responsibility to respond and support um, julia thank you so much for your artist talk and the in-depth explanation of your urns. They're fabulous. Uh, I can't wait to see the, the other two. I can't wait to see you possibly in Missoula. And as, as you travel, I use this analogy with the exhibition and a comment along what Janie said, you must see it to believe it. You must see it to experience it. You must walk the gallery floor. Uh, pictures don't do it justice as the cliche is, is so um, overused, but underrated. I was in, um, 
Jackson, Wyoming recently and sent pictures back and there's just nothing like being in the environment. And so I use that uh, to encourage everyone to come out and join us at Florida Craft Arts seven days a week, free and open to the public. And there are still a number of pieces available without red dots. So come in and voice your concern and support for the environment and our artists. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Tyler. I also wanted to mention that we will be posting this Zoom call on our website under videos. Also, I see one of our other artists here, Nick Reale, who has a chair in the exhibition. There's a video about him and his studio. He used all recycled and repurposed wood. Do you want to say anything real quick, Nick? I think everybody wants to leave, but I'll just say, <laughs> I'll just say thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the, the chair is all made from local Pinellas County rosewood. So thank it's you. all wood that's already been cut down and yes. that, uh, so it's, it's all recycled. So thank you right. all so much and we really appreciate it. We'll look forward to seeing you in the gallery. Have a great evening.